Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Thursday, December the 3rd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, the Lord comes to save us. O come, let us worship him. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. This is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. But I call to the Lord, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety from the battle that I wage, for many are arrayed against me. God will give ear and humble them, he who is enthroned from of old, because they do not change and do not fear God. My companion stretched out his hand against his friends. He violated his covenant. His speech was smooth as butter, yet war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, will cast them down into the pit of destruction. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days. But I will put my trust in you. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Our Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapters 9 and 10, uh, 8 and 9. 9 and 10, I'm on the wrong page. Here we go. The Lord has sent a word against Jacob and will fall on Israel, and all the people will know, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and arrogance of heart, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down but we will put cedars in their place. But the Lord raises the adversaries of resin against him and stirs up his enemies. The Syrians on the east and the Philistines on the west devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. The people did not turn to him who struck them, nor inquire of the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. The elder and honored man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies the tail. For those who guide this people have been leading them astray, and those who are guided by them are swallowed up. Therefore the Lord does not rejoice over their young men, and has no compassion on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is godless and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire, it consumes briars and thorns, it kindles the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, the land is scorched, and the people are like fuel for the fire. No one spares another. They slice meat on the right, but are still hungry, and they devour on the left, but are not satisfied. Each devours the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh devours Ephraim, and Ephraim devours Manasseh. Together they are against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. Woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees and the writers who keep writing oppression, to turn aside the needy from justice, and to rob the poor of my people of their right. The widows may be their spoil, and that they may make the fatherless their prey. What will you do on the day of punishment and the ruin that will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help, and where will you leave your wealth? Nothing remains but to couch, crouch among the prisoners, or fall among the slain. For all this his anger has not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. Ah, uh, Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff in their hands, is my fury. Against a godless nation I send him, and against the people of my wrath I command him, to take spoil and seize plunder, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But he does not so intend, and his heart does not so think. But it is in his heart to destroy, and to cut off nations, not a few. For he says, Are not my commandments, are not all my commanders all kings? Is not Calno like Carchemish? 
Is Hamath like Arpad? Is Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has reached to the kingdoms of the idols, whose carved images were greater than those of Jerusalem and Samaria, do I not do to Jerusalem and her idols as I have done to Samaria and her images? Our writing this morning is from Martin Luther's book, The Bondage of the Will. God has assuredly promised his grace to the humble, 1 Peter 5.5. 5. That is, to those who lament and despair of themselves, but no man can be thoroughly humbled until he knows that his salvation is utterly beyond his own powers, devices, endeavors, will, and works, and depends entirely on the choice, will, and work of another, namely of God alone. For as long as he is persuaded that he himself can do even the least thing toward his salvation, he retains some self-confidence confidence, and does not altogether despair of himself. And therefore he is not humbled before God, but presumes that there is, or at least hopes or desires that there may be, some time, place, and work for him, by which he may at length attain salvation. But when a man has no doubt that everything depends on the will of God, then he completely despairs of himself, and chooses nothing for himself, but waits for God to work, then he has come close to grace and can be saved. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, true King of heaven and earth, you promised to your church that the gates of hell would not prevail against her, and you still cause your word to be preached and your holy sacraments to be administered among us. But ah, O Lord, the sins of your people obscure the majesty of your bride. Your holy vineyard is trampled, and your blessed sacrifice stands neglected. Many think themselves strong and despise the life-giving food that you have ordained for your people, for the forgiveness of their sins. Pardon all our arrogance, and do not come to us in wrath to remove the lamp of your word from before our eyes. O Lord, we pray you, visit this vine which you once established for yourself, and renew us with the sun of your mercy and the water of eternal life. Give us a great hunger for the food of your true body and blood, and let all your faithful people ever be found in the apostles' doctrine in the fellowship, in the breaking of your bread, and in the prayers. We implore you, O Lord, for our altar, that it may ever be a place where the medicine of eternal life, the forgiveness of our sins, strengthens us in body and soul, that disbelief and impenitence may stay far from all who come there, so that they may not eat and drink to their own judgment. O eternal High Priest, let the fruit of your Spirit grow in us, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and chastity. Cause us to live in holy conduct toward one another, to the glory of your holy name, here in time, and hereafter in eternity. For you live and reign with the Father and the same Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, your Son Jesus triumphed over the Prince of Demons and freed us from bondage to sin. Help us to stand firm against every assault of Satan and enable us always to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.